So hello everyone again. Today we will be talking about De Morgan's theorem and we will be covering this because it is very useful especially for implementation of the circuits in IC chips. Uh, using De Morgan's theorem you can make it so that the only logic gate you are using is a NAND gate or NAND gates so it's definitely extremely helpful and that's why we're covering it. So some people separate De Morgan's theorem into two parts. The first is saying that A and B not is equal to A not or B not. So basically what is happening here is that we're taking this not and separating it into the variables and changing the ands to ors. So we should always keep that in mind. And then the second part of the theorem that is the A or B not will equal A not and B not. So again, doing the same thing, separating the not into the inputs and switching the or to the and. So this time it's or to and. So it's pretty straightforward but incredibly useful and we can always do some examples and for these examples we will be using a lot the inverse property that I went over in a previous video. That property states that A inverted, the inverse of the inverse of A is equal to A. We will be using this a lot because as you can see if we have let's say a not and b and then we want to inverse that then we will have a not not or b not and so this way it'll just be a or b not and even though the not is not on top of the a we do know that this will work because of de morgan's theorem a better way to visualize this is through logic gates. So for example, we have A and B not. So that's an AND gate with a not as, it out, as its output. Then we have the inputs A, we have the input B. So what we're going to do is that instead of having this not in the AND, we're just going to have, we're going to invert here. We're going to invert here for the inputs. So you can go this way, or also if you exchange the AND for an OR and the OR for an AND, it'll be the same for this, this example. So it's pretty straightforward. Again, it'll be really helpful despite its simplicity. OK, so now let's go over some examples. Our first example is going to be A or B and C not not. So let's try to remember how we should do this. Um, we can do this in whichever order you would like, but I think that for the purpose of showing how you can do De Morgan's theorem with three inputs, it would, it would be good to look at this term right here the B and C not. So according to De Morgan's theorem, B and C not are is equivalent to B not or C not. So we can just go ahead and replace that. And so we have A or B not or C not not. So now we have this big knot over the three-part OR. So what we're going to do is the same exact process. We're going to say that OR, the inverted OR, will equal AND of inverted inputs. So we're going to have A not and B not not and C. and C not not. 
And then as I mentioned before, you're going to have a double inverse, which brings it back to B and C. So then the final answer will be A naught B C. So as you can see, we simplified this expression really well. If I were to draw the logic gates for this, it would be an OR gate with a NOT and an AND gate, which is not bad, but we definitely want to simplify it as much as possible. So this would be our circuit for this example for the first expression, and then for the second expression, it'll simply be this. So you can see how this can bring so many advantages because in terms of circuit design, you will always want the least amount of gates possible and also because of the complexity, but mainly because it will, each gate will lose power and will not be as energy efficient. So if you just crowd your circuit with logic gates, it would definitely not be good. So extremely useful. Now let's go on to the second example. So for this example, it's going to be very simple. I just wanted to do this example to demonstrate how you can go the other way as well. Um, so right now we have inverted inputs C and or B. And what we're going to do is that we know that um, we know that C B and B not is going to equal C not or B. And so I just wanted to demonstrate how you can go both ways. You can also do C naught or B naught is equal to C B naught. So then we'll have C B naught A. So for this specific case, it does not simplify the circuit much. You're still going to have to use two ands, AND gates, but you won't, you will need you will need both in both scenarios but I just really wanted to demonstrate how it goes both ways and how we should be aware of that as well so that's mostly it on DeMorgan's theorem uh, later on we're gonna go much more into depth with it and see how we can create circuits with just NAND gates it's better to understand with truth tables and that's why I'm waiting for another video to go into that but yeah I hope this was helpful